Hi, good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to our webinar for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope that each and every one of you participating on this webinar are safe. And we would like to also thank our sponsor, which is Alpa TV. Thank you very much for sponsoring this webinar. So once again, welcome to the power of asking questions and providing feedback. So now let's keep the ball rolling by going to the next slide. And we will start on the next slide with a quote about questions. So what I would like you to do is to focus on the next slide in order for you guys to reflect on this particular quote. Okay. Uh, but before we proceed to that, let me first introduce myself to you. So I'm Rai Cruz. I am a certified life coach here in Aslex, Philippines. And uh, I've been doing uh, coaching and mentoring programs for about a decade now as my uh, profession is more about learning and organiza organizational development. So uh, what I'll be sharing with you is my insight on how the power of asking questions makes a significant difference in people's lives as well as uh, providing feedback both personally and professionally. Okay. So with that, uh, let's proceed to the next slide. So I want you to focus on this next slide and reflect. I'll give you about maybe one to two minutes to reflect on it. And you could send your reactions through chat so that I'll be looking your insight about this particular code. And this quote is from Plato. So Plato is one of the famous philosophers that have ever lived in on earth. Okay, so hope you can see the The slide which says the right question is usually more important than the right answer. Okay, so I'll be giving you one to two minutes to reflect, to have your specific insight on this uh, code. And you could provide your what comes into your mind on our chat box. Okay, last 30 seconds.
So I could see there are already insights coming from the participants here. From Rio Lorraine Salandanan. Simply because when the question is wrong, more probably the answer. Okay. From Tony Stark. Yes. I totally agree with this question of Plato. I always teach my mentees that there are no wrong answers, only wrong questions. Okay, great. All right. So thank you for those insights. Are there any other who would like to share on the chat box? You can do so or forever hold your peace. Okay, so there's another from Archie Reyes. Because the right questions is more important than to the right answer, it says about the right questioning leads to the directly understanding to your needs or demands, especially the time is essential to ask questions and answer directly. Okay, thank you very much for that, Archie. By the way, there's no right or wrong answers here. So these are all what comes into your mind about the quotation. For CJ Kanyas, one cannot provide the right answer if you don't get the right question in the first place. Okay, thank you for that, CJ. Agree with that? Okay. Maybe let's wait for one more and then we'll, we'll go to the application of this through the next slide that I'll be showing. Okay, last one from Rose Ann Castillo. Thank you very much for your insight. Yes, if questions were irrelevant, then the topic will be disclosed and might come up to a wrong answer. Yes, correct. All right, so all these insights, now let's put it in a context of uh, uh, an inaction. So how does it apply? The right question usually is more important than the right answer. And let me share this with you through a short story. So is it okay for me to tell a short story to you so that we could relate on this quote? Okay, so I'll be turning on the next slide. And this is a practical story that uh, actually happened to me, a personal story. Uh, this is way back uh, uh, a year ago. And I have a, a meeting no, from my office in Ortigas Avenue in Antel Global Corporate Center. So I, was, I had a meeting going to uh, in Ayala, in VA Rufino. The European Street uh, in Tuscan building, so seventh floor Tuscan building. And uh, that was about one in the afternoon, so it's very hot. And it's also very inconvenient for me to bring my car because of all the hassles, uh, the traffic, the time consuming in terms of. Uh, parking your car, and then um, also the, the hassle of uh, um, bringing your car and being on traffic uh, instead of uh, just relaxing as a passenger. So what happened then was uh, I left there. The meeting was by 3 p.m., supposedly in uh, V.A. Rufino Street in Makati City. So I left in... Antel Global by around 1.45. That's where I have a grab 
driver, which uh, name is uh, Miguel, as you could see here. So his name is Miguel. And after that, we, we go on from Antel Global going to Via Rufino, Makati. But suddenly, upon in the middle of that travel, we were about going to the Edsa route. We are about in the Bendia area. So about uh, seven kilometers away from our destination. And then suddenly, Miguel looked at me and said, uh, Sir, sorry, but my data in his phone seems to be not working. So, okay, so I said to him, uh, I'll just use my Google Maps in order to determine the, the route. And then uh, he told me that because I, I know exactly the route of how to go to that destination in your, in your meeting place in Rufina Street. But uh, I am contemplating either I could pass by Arnais Pasay Road or Ayala Avenue. Okay, so for me, uh, what I did instead of just telling directly my answer, I said to Miguel in a form of a question. So, Miguel, how do you think or what do you think would be the best route from here going to, our, to my meeting in VA Rufino Street? Okay, and then he scratched his head and then uh, paused for a little while and uh, think about one to three seconds and then after that mm, he said aha sir i know the best route to go to your meeting in via rufino hey. and it would be in ayala avenue all right so why do you think that uh, that would be the best route going to ayala avenue so he explained even further, he said that uh, because, sir, when we go to Arnais Street or Pasay Road, uh, there would be about six stoplights. And those stoplights, each of them is uh, composed or has a time of 120 seconds. Okay, I said, so how about in Ayala Avenue? But in Ayala Avenue, we will only pass by one, three. There are only three traffic lights that we will encounter. So a total of about 360 seconds, we will, we will ha have a saving on, on your time, which is equivalent to six minutes, rather than passing by the... Arnais Avenue, Pasay Road, with the same distance. Either we pass by Ayala Avenue or Pasay Road, both seven kilometers. All right. So, so I said, you really, you really know that stuff, huh? You really are a, a great driver. Yes, sir, he said, because I've been driving uh, here in, within Metro Manila for about three years. And... Um, Sometimes I get bored and I used to, to count the, the, the tra number of traffic lights as well as being observant on the second, seconds. So that's a, for me, it's a practical example of how powerful asking question is all about. Right? Do you agree? Because uh, sometimes as people, leaders, managers, and supervisors, uh, we handle a comple complex task of handling people, right? And on handling these people, uh, we really have no direct uh, contact to, to those people who are, I mean, we, 
the people who are working on their respective uh, functions or areas are really are the ones who know how to do their job the best way they can. But the, for us as a manager, leader, supervisor, our task for them is just to make that aha moment by asking questions and triggering their the things that uh, we don't expect now that that they would give us just like the uh, miguel as the grab driver i didn't expect that that his rationale for taking that ayala route was was that specific and was that uh, accurate because of uh, he counted the number of stoplights that's why it's more quicker there it will save us uh, six minutes that and then i arrived there early about 15 minutes in in the meeting place so um that is the power of asking questions and you could do this or apply this even in your own professional lives like with your colleagues if uh, or to your subordinates as supervisors managers leaders on your own respective uh, rights even if you're a student you may be a student leader instead of uh, delegating or instead of directing telling your subordinates on how to do things you'll be surprised if you ask them in a form of a question and if they answer you right so let's just check the chat i think someone chat okay yes great so there's a reaction here for uh will zell can last right questions at the right time will engage good exchanges of thoughts and ideas all right Yes, all yes. No? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for uh, sharing your reactions to our chat box, dear participants. So now, well, very important context here, especially in a coaching mentoring session, is what the next slide is all about. Okay, so if there are any comments, clarification, just feel free to, to use our chat box. So it's important that we have this coaching mindset. So it's really important where in a, where we where we are in a coaching and mentoring session. Our mindset is more about uh, future oriented, future oriented, solution minded, and it's more of looking at uh, things in the perspective of co-creation and listening to each other. So in, in a form of a uh, conversation, rather than directing, problem solving, or telling what the person needs to do. Okay, in the, because in a, in a coaching session, in a coaching or either coaching or mentoring session, the mindset is very important for you as a coach and mentor that the things that you think of is more of a future oriented rather than past oriented that it is more of a question rather than seeking for the direct right answer you're seeking rather than the in the form of a question to inculcate the best possible answer and then after that would be also to to empower in a coaching and mentoring aspect or type of interaction conversation it's more of really empowerment through asking questions 
rather than directing or telling the person what he or she needs to do. So there's really a, a big gap in here because especially in our uh, education system that uh, we've had, mostly it's more of directing and telling. Like you read the pages on the book of this, giving assignments, being graded on those. So the, what I'm saying here is that the practice of future-oriented thinking as well as being solution-minded mind, is uh, limited in terms of the interaction. It's more of the teacher telling the students what to do rather than exploring to the students what they can do in a form of a question or what more they could do in a form of a question. So mo most of, especially uh, in my time, in the previous uh, academic setup, I hope now it, it somehow changes. No? Um, people are really uh, one way. The teacher is the, like the master and the students just follow. So with that mindset, Imagine from elementary, high school, and college, about uh, 10 or more years, the mindset is always the default, is always problem solving, directing, telling, rather than uh, empowering or having a coaching conversation. So that's what we would like to inculcate to, to the people, especially if you're handling People nowadays, the millennials, it's very critical that uh, we look into a coaching conversation mindset, coaching and mentoring conversation mindset, or a system design wherein we look in the long term, focus on the exploration of what is possible, and uh, conversation styles are, are shorter and driven by or triggered by questions. Okay, and to delve into what are the questions that we would, we would ask to our coachee or mentee moving forward, or are there any other questions or clarifications, wild reactions? And just put it in, your, in our chat box. So that this would be a, a more interactive session. So in, in your insight, what do you think? Uh, is there a, in, in terms of our education system now, was there any difference or empowering is already being demonstrated in, in our, in, in our uh, academe nowadays? Because that's where the foundation, that's very important, the foundation of uh, our learning is, uh, is being inculcated to the students. So it's very important at that critical stage, I hope that uh, as of now, there, there's already a, a big difference rather than before being the authoritative teacher, one way directing all the students to do this and do that. So in your observation, especially, I think Sir Jojo is a, from the academe. So I think he could give us some insight on that. Communication is indeed a, a two-way channel by CJ Kanyas. So thank you for that. Uh, CJ, yes, I believe that uh, communication is a two-way channel, meaning there's the receiver and there's the giver of the... So there's an interaction. That's why it's called an interaction because it's a two-way channel. Uh, what happens when sometimes when we are always directing and telling, just like... Um, uh, master or the authority, no? there is no really 
through interaction uh, that is happening. Okay. All right, are there any other? Okay. Okay, so there's also a sharing here that, uh, so we used to ask indirect questions to my students. So that's also a good technique. Like he, he asked why he or she failed the exam. So that's a, um, that's a great exercise because rather than telling the person you failed because uh, one, two, three, four, five. No? So having this particular questioning mindset, coaching and mentoring in a coaching and mentoring session, uh, you would explore rather than directly telling the student you failed because of this and that, right? So instead of asking, have you reviewed? So he'll ask rather, what did you do from the past weeks? Correct. So that gives uh, a more exploratory or an open, let's see, that is type of an open-ended question. So let's move on to the next slide to know the types of questions that uh, we could use in a coaching and mentoring session. Okay, there. So let's, I'll be sharing with you the three types no, of uh, questions. So this is not the, uh, the all in all list of types of questions. Of course, there are many other lists, but these are the commonly types of question used when we are in a coaching mentoring session. So first it's an open end or oh, the open ended question. So these are used to commonly encourage your mentee for the mentor and coachy for the coach to speak so that you could gather the necessary information. They often start with what, where, which, and how. So we, uh, the key in open-ended question is, uh, just a tip is that we don't normally ask the why. So you may ask me why. <laughs> why is, why not so much ask in a coaching and mentoring session? It's because sometimes, no, if you ask why, the tendency of the person is to be reactive. And in so being reactive, the person that you're asking why is already building a defense wall or a defense mechanism that uh, he will find reasons why he didn't do it. So it's more of like a interrogating question, the, the why, rather than uh, we, ref we avoid the why and work on the what, where, which, and how to be specific. And then also, you will find that uh, they work best when the converse conversation is already flowing freely. So that's also uh, the tip when we ask questions. And we don't also ask questions uh, like a question after the question. No? So because the once again, the person will feel that he or she is being interrogated. Okay, next we go to the probing questions. Oh, addition for the open-ended questions. Oh, this uh, requires the mentee coach to give a yes or no answer. So such questions should be used uh, sparingly because they tend to make any conversation feel awkward, one-sided. That's what I gave on the first slide. Know that this uh, the person would be feel interrogated if you give him several questions. So the 
giving of questions is just one at a time and then let the person answer, explore, and then clarify. And then when coaching and mentoring, they are best avoided as they can harm the rapport and empathy that are essential part of the process. So as much as possible, we also try to avoid the uh, open-ended questions uh, because it creates a defense mechanism for people. So next is the probing. So example of, uh, before we go to the probing, example of an uh, open, close question is, did you do this? Yes or no? So it, it's very intimidating, right? When you said, uh, did you do this? So it's just like yes or no. So now for the probing part, probing questions can be used to clarify something that has already been said to find out more detail about it. And uh, this is so far the most used type of question in uh, coaching and mentoring session. So we probe. So this type of question is very helpful because it establishes rapport and it entails uh, explora exploratory thinking for the person that is questioned. Just like uh, what uh, the other um, from the chat box. So he's not asking uh, directly, no? But uh, rather indirectly, the, the question like why he failed the exam. So it's very direct and uh, it's, it's a sort of interrogating so instead he asked uh, what did you do from the past weeks so that is a, a good example of uh, probing questions okay and also uh, another question that or type of question is which is a good practice in a coaching and mentoring session. Is Fara praising? So Fara praising is uh, questions that are one of the best means of checking your own understanding of what the mentoring coach was saying. So because sometimes we are preoccupied, so it's very important to paraphrase. As an example here, for the maintain coach, I can't deliver on that unless accounts get the information to me the same day. So this is in a sales setup. So the mentoring coach uh, was paraphrasing that, I'm hearing you say that you couldn't deliver if the accounts department were able to get the information to you on the same day you requested. Am I understanding this correctly? So those are a good example of uh, paraphrasing. So paraphrasing actually is not like uh, you're repeating the same exact words or that is called parroting. That's not paraphrasing. That you repeat the exact same words that the person is saying. So that's the difference between paraphrasing and paroting. Paroting is you're repeating the same words, which is annoying to uh, any con coaching or mentoring conversation or in any conversation, right? When a person repeats what you say word by word, so that's, that's annoying, no? That's like uh, paroting. So we don't do that. What we are doing is that we paraphrase, so we put, or summarize certain keywords that are essential to the message of that we're making a conversation or interaction. And then uh, what we'll do is to frame it into a question that uh, would make a follow-up if we really understand 
what he or she is saying to you. Okay, so it's very important here, the active listening component. Okay. All right, so with that, uh, we're done with the questions part. Now, uh, are we ready to proceed with our feedback? Okay, let's now proceed uh, with the feedbacking. So after the questioning, here's now the feedback. So there's a saying by, by this uh, famous author of the One Minute Manager, which is Ken Blanchard, that uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Um, so I'll give you about, again, one to two minutes to absorb this uh, quote and give your insights to our chat box. Okay, so uh, by the way, do we have a foreign participant here by the name of Dave Harry? Thank you for giving us your insight. And his insight is proving and paraphrase questions follow the Toyota Kata methodology, which is uh, five questions and elicit menti thoughts. So. Uh, glad to hear that, Dave, for your, for your insight in terms of uh, sharing, probing, and paraphrase questions that is also used in the Toyota methodology or the Toyota way. And from Archie Reyes, feedback, going now to our quote on feedback, feedback is the way you open your opportunity to make it change it better even though if a positive back or negative back to your product, okay? Then uh, from Dave again, I believe if there's no feedback, there could be no continuous improvement, right? So agree with that. And from Rajesh, feedbacks create opportunity. Um, yeah, that's true, Rajesh. By the way, Rajesh is, uh, would just like to acknowledge him. He's my uh, high school friend back in uh, Don Bosco Mandaluyong. Hi, Rajesh. Nice to see you here. And then uh, giving feedback is the result of your current actions to your goals. From Rose Ann Castillo. Thank you, Rose Ann. Feedback is the result of your current action to your goals. Yes. And from Jay Gomez, you're welcome, Rajesh, by the way. Feedback is used to reflect and Im to improve yourself. And if no feedback from uh, Felix, Veroya, the communication is a dead end and there are no actions that can be taken moving forward. Yeah. Totally agree with your answers. No feedback is uh, critical and very important and uh, the problem is that uh, some people 
or or I think most of the Asian culture are not uh, that open to 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 feedback. So as I observe working from uh, other Asian countries such as uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, China, you now most most of the people there or in Brunei as well, that uh, they're not that such uh, open to feedback. Also here in the Philippines, we you need to like make it light, go behind, go around uh, a bush a little bit so that uh, it would be some sort of a, a light feedback for them. Because people here are, are maybe, are unlike in the Western setup, Maybe Dave could uh, relate on this. That uh, I've observed that they're really um, straightforward. No, you could say anything, right there and there. Direct feedback. Okay, we have another. I'll just read the other insights from our participants here. From uh, Rio, Lorraine Salandan, Salandanan. Feedback is the fuel of more effective actions and decisions being used by almost of all organizations and businesses. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So that's why um, the quote says, feedback is the breakfast of champions because either in uh, sports, so this is more applicable in sports, right? Because there's the champion word, but Really, when you give, when you contextualize it into the workplace setting, so feedback also is very important in order for us to improve on, on the products that we provide, on the work that we do. Otherwise, um, have you read the book by Malcolm Gladwell, The Outliers? He says that we, in order to be a master of anything, you need 10,000 hours. Right, ten out ten thousand hours, but without feedback, you may have you might have been doing the same thing within ten thousand hours, but without feedback or evaluation, you could be doing it wrongly, right? And you could be doing it within ten thousand hours, and still you're not a master because there was no feedback, and it was not evaluated well, right? Okay, let's, I think there's another one. Yes, that's a great book, yeah. Okay, so now what we'll be learning is what are the effective components of providing a feedback? Because sometimes we just say uh, feedback is a, a one-way street, right? But now, uh, given the complex we're living in, they say in a VUCA world, which is a volatile, and then uh, the, the VUCA, let's say, the undefined, the complex. So uh, in these times of uh, information overload, what is important is uh, we know how to give feedback and this feedback is more of not only just a feedback one-way street but it's more of a coaching conversation mode so how we do it we just think of saturday the initials of saturday or sat so it the uh, feedback should be specific clear cut and later on, we'll explore how is it done. And actionable as well for the A. Actionable meaning we could demonstrate it. We could, the person you're providing feedback can observe how is it done properly. And lastly, the T stands for the timely feedback. So it helps others understand your 
comments or your observation, then focus that comment on a clear-cut specific thing and it outlines uh, the impact to others. So let's see this one by one. So when we say specific, uh, we inform no, that it has uh, not, what has not been accomplished or what has or what has not been accomplished, meaning when we say specific, there, there's really a, a target. Like for example, uh, just to give an immediate example in sales, so if he hits the target uh, 10 million, so if there's a specific gap with that, let's say 8 million, so there's a 2 million difference, so that's very easy. Now we will, we will need to inform the particular person or that subordinate of ours that he or she has not accomplished 2 million in order to, to have the target of the 10 million quota. So we need uh, a certain uh, specific information. Or like, for example, the person is uh, being late. So we should relate the specific time as well as the, the date that he or she is uh, being late. Because sometimes uh, the tendency is uh, just to say, you're always late, you're always absent. So giving that particular feedback is wrong because it, we need to be specific so that the person could see what are you talking about in terms of your giving feedback. And then second, when we say specific, we explain the rationale, the impact, of uh, his or her action, like especially in a manufacturing company where assembly line, like for example, an assembly line, it's very important no, that uh, you explain to like, let's say the manufacturing manager or the supervisor, if he or she is late, how his particular assembly line could affect the other the other line, right? And providing data points. So now, since we are in a data analytics world, we need to provide certain data such as uh, key performance indicators or KPIs, metrics, as well as the observable behavior based on the patterns of the behavior of the person. Now, this gives me the specific feedback is just like the story that I've told you for, for the Grab driver, Miguel. No? He really gives the specifics in terms of or the rationale why uh, he chose the Ayala Avenue route rather than the Arnais or Pasay Road route because of the number of stoplights and not only that, converting those into time, element, or minutes. Okay, the next is uh, actionable feedback. So in terms of actionable, actionable feedback, so as I've said earlier, we need to demonstrate it on how to do it. Uh, as the saying goes, we cannot give what we don't have. So what we need to do is, if we're telling the person on how to do it, uh, we need to demonstrate it we ourselves so that he or she could do it so that they could clearly see what's the standard of how to do the things that we want to do or achieve and then it's also clear and repeatable and observable on how how is it done okay so a, a good example of this is uh, martial arts, right? Or uh, being a Lean Six Sigma practitioner, there's the yellow, green, black, master black 
Oh, just like in uh, martial arts, they adapted that there. No, there's a clear demonstration of how to do things in terms of uh, solving problems, in terms of using the DME or the processes that they need to undergo. It's clear and repeatable. And it's also observable. There, there's an end result that uh, needs to be seen on how they failed or how they exceed or how they achieve the target. And lastly, it should be timely. It should reinforce recent and relevant actions and provide just-in-time guidance. So the problem here lies especially in the performance management system of uh, most of the companies are still following the format of uh, yearly or semi-annually. Now, if you give feedback on that time frame, it's already obsolete. So that's why uh, as much as possible, the ideal should be on a monthly at least or even a weekly basis, especially if you're uh, handling just a small team. So it's important to be on a weekly or monthly basis. But if you have a larger team, quarterly would, would, uh, would, would do in order to provide the feedback. But still, the, the, the time element is very important as well in providing uh, feedback. So you need to observe the person. No? So I'll just tell you a side story. There was this uh, uh, person when I was working in a bank. Uh, I was the training manager and I have a training officer. And uh, what happened is that uh, I was tasked, of course, to, to administer the performance uh, appraisal for her. And, but uh, unfortunately, her dog died that day. And what happened was, uh, before... Uh, I was not that sensitive to those issues, so or not uh, having uh, the knowledge of having a timely feedback. I, I just said, uh, it's only a dog. So we need to do this uh, performance appraisal or else you're not going to uh, get any uh, bonus. So I was insensitive on that time, but now I realize that uh, that that's also plays a, a critical timing in terms of providing uh, feedback, which is timely. So uh, what is important here is we need to also observe very well our, the people that are under us. No? And uh, if they have uh, certain problems, we need to... We need to know that as well as their manager, supervisor, or leader. Okay. Hello? Can you still hear me? Hello guys, am I clear? Okay, thank you for your feedback. So that's a, yeah, an instant timely feedback. Thank you for your timely feedback that uh, the audio is working well. All right, so So far, that's uh, the contents of our learning for tonight. So at this point, um, what have you learned in terms of, uh, I'll give you an assessment. So you may chat, use the chat box. What, what are the three types of questions that uh, we've discussed? And what are the three types of uh, feedback 
that uh, we have uh, shared so far in this uh, session. So just give me a, uh, a summary of what you've learned. So it might not be directly the, the, the tree, but something that uh, you could have take out and apply immediately on your, on the respective things that you are doing now. Okay, so let's look at the chat box. Three types from Will Zell Canlas. What three types? The three types of questions and feedback. Okay, from Felix, open ended probing. From CJ Kanyas, open ended probing and paraphrasing, SAT. Oh, the, very good, uh, CJ. Specific, actionable, and timely. For Rose and Castillo, the three types of questions were open ended probing, paraphrasing question. Feedback must be specific, actionable, and timely. Thank you for that, Rose and. Okay, so Wilzel again, uh, tell us, us what he, what, uh, he learned open-ended probing and paraphrasing. Okay, so uh, napost agad kanina. Yeah, na, masyado mabilis mag-type. All right. <laughs> okay, another one is uh, always ask the right questions. Always, yes. Because without asking the right question, there would be no aha moment. No? Feedback must be given when it is due and must be delivered appropriately. Great. So anything else that you would like to share, guys? Uh, what have you learned so far? All right. So, okay, there's another one. Okay, with that, uh, let's have a question and answer portion, maybe around uh, three to five questions. Are there uh, any other additional questions, clarifications? that you may have so please uh, let's uh, let's give about uh, one to two minutes in the chat box for you to to type it maybe a uh, first three to five questions Okay, so there's a question here. Hello, sir. I'm just wondering if this is also applicable in managing questions and feedback in reference to your immediate superior. Um, well, in terms of managing, managing questions and feedback in reference to your immediate superior, yeah, this would be very applicable to them. So that's why... Um, Actually, this is just a teaser in terms of the webinar. So the full uh, package of this program is called really Coaching and Mentoring Fundamentals. So may I invite all of you if you are available on uh, April 25. So that's at least uh, 
11 days after the declaration of uh, quarantine, hopefully. Uh, if we, if uh, there's no more uh, enhanced quarantine here in uh, Metro Manila, I hope and pray that uh, on April 25, we'll have this coaching and mentoring fundamentals on April 25. That's in St. Giles Hotel in Makati. So uh, if you're interested, you could uh, message uh, Lex, the Ask Lex PH Academy, because they're the ones organizing this uh, program. In there, we will have the full gamut of tools on how to relate these uh, questions as well as a feedback in how to manage uh, yourself, your peers, as well as your um, superiors and subordinates. Yes, in there also we will not just uh, give you the, the questions and feedback, but also we will give you the concepts and principles on how to do an effective coaching and mentoring on both for yourself, for your subordinates, peers, and as well how to like manage up no, to your superiors. Yeah, by, by, because by having these uh, respective tools uh, that I've told you, so you will be more equipped in terms of uh, managing questions to your, to your superiors and providing feedback as well. So, okay, so we have a question from Rio Lorraine Salanda. I learned how to ask in a smart way without being sounded sarcastic and inter interrogative and being able to express myself by giving feedbacks in a more effective way. Thank you for this session. Again, as Lex, it makes my quarantine period more productive. Wow, uh, thank you for that uh, feedback, Rio. And really, that's uh, the essence of learning. No? It's uh, having it to apply it. So for Dave Harry, to me, I believe asking question, if akin to define, face in six sigma, and most important to spend time in understanding the problem. Feedback, please thank my friend Felix Veroya for all he does to assist the PI in this effort. Okay, hands, hands off to Mr. Felix Veroya, our, our founder of Asflex. Okay, so with that, are there any other questions? So if none, thank you very much and hope you learned something new today. And uh, I hope it's a productive way of uh, spending your time given uh, the quarantine, the, which is a worldwide um, phenomenon. So take care always and hope each and every one of you are safe god bless and thank you aslex for sponsoring this uh, free webinar thank you everyone bye thank you bye until our next free free session yes. bye bye yes.